I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. Very pleased to be joined by Peter Corbett. Thanks so much for coming along. Thank you for having me. CEO of iStrategy Labs. Tell me what's on your mind. Well, we focus mostly on the intersection of online and off. So we're always thinking about how can we hack the physical space with all of this real-time social data, for example, that uh, we generate every day by tweeting and liking and checking and all the rest. And here at Davos, there's been a lot of uh, conversation around the Internet of Things and how we're kind of merging those worlds of online and off. So it's been really instructive for me. Uh, and then at the same time, I'm a global shaper, which mm -hmm. is a new group that was formed by the World Economic Forum. There are 50 of us from all over the world who are uh, mostly 20-somethings. I'm apparently the old guy now. I'm 32. <laughs> uh, where we have been building businesses or social enterprises or doing something great in government. And we've all come together uh, early in the program to get to know each other and help support the things that we're building all over the world. So what do you think about these youth movements? It's been really interesting last couple of years. A couple of years ago at Davos, in fact, we were talking about how you know, people, young people were using social networks to cause revolution mm -hmm. across the Middle East, for example. We've seen, um, and in fact, in the last year, we had the Occupy movement. What do you think, as a sort of shaper perspective, mm -hmm. of the importance of these youth mm -hmm. movements? Well, I think we're still um, disrupting and causing revolution. I don't think we're going to stop. Uh, I think it's really interesting to see that the youth movement itself is going to change the way that corporate America eventually works. We're just starting to see the edges of that. Uh, as corporations build these uh, innovation labs where they can take um, creatives and um, young entrepreneurs into their, mm -hmm. their companies and not constrain the possibilities, right? So young people today, uh, they don't want to work in a cubicle, they don't want to wear a suit and tie every day, they don't, want, they don't really want a boss, they, wanna, they just want to express their creativity and live their passions every day. And so it's a challenge for the Fortune you know, 1000 or, or whatever to create that kind of environment. And eventually they're going to absolutely have to. Otherwise they're going to miss out on a generation of talent. And that talent has uh, the ability to program and design and animate and shoot and do all these kinds of things that their parents might not have been able to do. And if their parents did any of it, they only did one thing. They were a great videographer mm -hmm. or they were a, a great painter. But this, this youth movement um, is about sort of a multidisciplinary approach to all of it. Um, how that will play out across the political spectrum, I think we've already seen that. I mean, mm -hmm. Arab Spring especially was a, a great expression of that. But what will happen in the developed world? What will happen in the United States um, as you have something like 30% of college graduates that are unemployed? Um, we saw Occupy, obviously, last mm -hmm. year. Um, that I'm not sure why it didn't continue. Maybe they, people said they didn't really stand for anything or they need to pick one thing. Um, that's not the last kind of movement we'll see mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. and in Europe. So it's going to be an interesting uh, next decade. And I just know from, from my point of view, I'm just going to keep working hard to build a great team and do things that are valuable in the world, especially for citizens and also for the companies that typically hire us. So as you grow and become more like those companies that mm. are in, in the Fortune 500, how do you keep the kind of spirit of mm. youth um, moving It's a challenge. You know, I'm a young CEO. I've never done this before necessarily, but um, if you come to our office, you'll notice that it's really informal. Um, a suit walking into the office would be like, it would be like a virus getting rejected. Mm -hmm. Now, it's okay. People can wear suits if they come by, but um, when people come to interviews, sometimes mm -hmm. they wear ties and you're like, what are you... What are you doing? Right. Um, so it's really about keeping it a bit informal, um, a bit rough, um, and I don't know, rough or raw or authentic, whatever word you want to choose. It's just like being able to live the way you want to live while actually exploring your passions and being paid very well for it. Mm -hmm. That's, I guess, the dream, right? That's what everybody wants. Um, so I'm just going to keep focused on making sure that the employees in the company can live the dream that they have. Um, and that in the process, it's the it's the dream that I have, and also the bringing the dreams to life that our clients have. So um, that's not easy. I mean, it's really it's easy to create a crappy culture, <laughs> which turns into a crappy company. It's right. really hard to like focus on creating a place that's absolutely amazing. And and we're lucky at iStrategy Labs that um, people are generally very happy. Um, they don't want to leave. They really like their coworkers. Mm -hmm. There's very little bureaucracy. There's really creative projects and. You know, if we become a 2,000-person company, I hope that I've baked that DNA in so deeply into everybody that we'll just, we'll just be that way. We'll see. Peter, thanks so much for taking the time to come into the pavilion. Good luck. Keep Thank it. you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm Edie Lush.